All right, I don't know if this is going to be so much a Bible study, but uh, this is going to be some of my thoughts on Houston and Hurricane Harvey. Let's take a look at what the Bible has to say. Actually, the Bible has to say a lot. All right, let's go to book of Nahum, N-A-H-U-M, one of the minor prophets. I've said it many times, but uh, they're called the minor prophets not because their message is minor in importance, but rather their size. They are the books just before the New Testament. You know the book of Matthew? Open to the book of Matthew and then go back a few pages. You will find the book of Nahum. Most church-going people have never even heard of these books. It's sad. Nahum chapter 1 and verse 3. The Lord, the Lord is slow to anger. That's a good thing for me because, boy, I did a lot of bad stuff when I was a young adult and a teen. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind. And what's a hurricane? What's a tornado? It's a whirlwind, people. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Did you catch that? The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So let's talk about Houston. Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States. It's the largest city in Texas. If Dallas and Fort Worth were not split, uh, that would be the largest city in Texas and probably the fourth, well, the fourth, maybe the fourth largest, I don't know, in the United States. But from what I understand, New York is number one largest city in the country. Los Angeles is number two. Chicago is number three. Chicago had 762 murders last year. Isn't that wonderful? And they're on track to even match or surpass that this year. And Houston is number four. So you got New York, LA, Chicago, Houston. So why is Houston suffering all this stuff? Well, guess what? There was a lesbian. Her name was Anise. Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R. -E and uh, she was the previous mayor. They got a new guy now as Sylvester, whatever, I don't know. But Sylvester something or other. But uh, Anise Parker was a an avowed lesbian, a militant avowed lesbian. And she was pat tried to get a so-called anti-discrimination act. And she didn't like what the Bible has to say about sodomy and homosexuality. She doesn't like that at all. And she thinks, that's discrimination. You know, and, and, and Christians shouldn't be able to discriminate against sodomites. She was part of that lesbian, bisexual, gay, transsexual community, LBGT, whatever it is. So let's take a look at what the Bible has to say about um, sodomy. See this, uh, there's a little book in the Bible called Leviticus. And in chapter 20 and verse 13, there's this horrible homophobic statement in it. It says, if a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore 
of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And of course, your Christian pastors, so-called, I should say the church pastors, because, uh, well, don't get me started. They'll tell you, oh, well, this is for Israel. That's the Jews. That doesn't apply to us. You know, and, and all the laws, they were nailed to the cross. So, you know, just believe in Jesus and be saved. A praise of Jesus. Huh. Well, let's take a look at 1 Kings 14.24. And there were also sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Do you know what an abomination is? That is a sin, a, something very wicked that the Lord really especially hates. That's what an abomination is. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. In 1 Kings 15, 20, uh, 15 and verse 12, and he, and he, the king, and he took away the sodomites out of the land. He didn't buy them a Greyhound bus ticket to leave. No, he took them away. And he took away the sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his father had made. Wow. In 2 Kings 23, verse 7, And he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? How about 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, 5, and 6? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood, bringing in the flood, bringing in the flood, upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. So what has this got to do with this lesbian mayor, Anise Parker, who, the previous mayor. Well, she decided she didn't like what the Bible had to say about sodomy. And she decided, well, you know what? Pastors and preachers should have to write their sermons in advance and submit them to my office to be read to make sure they meet my approval. You see, separation of church and state only applies in the mind of these wicked liberal people. Separation of church and state only applies to the church wanting to have righteousness with the state. But when, it, when the state wants unrighteousness, oh, well, then there's separation of church and state. You know, there is no separation. I'm sorry. There is no separation of church and state. The state will tell the church, who most of the times is a business that is tax exempt. It's a corporation by the state. So if you want to keep your tax exemption status, church of whatever, business with a name church in it, you will submit to our guidelines and our rules. And you, we, no, 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 you, you can't be preaching that verse in Leviticus about, you know, they've committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. No, 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 you, you can't say that. 
But we've already solved that problem. Yeah, they've already solved that problem. Don't preach out of a King James. Use the NIV. The word sodomite doesn't even appear in the NIV. And of course, everybody knows what, you know, what happened in the in Sodom. And God sent the fire of, upon Sodom and Gomorrah as an example unto those that want to live ungodly. So, so this Anise Parker, uh, you probably, if you watch the regular news, you didn't hear a word about this Anise Parker. But if you read religious-based news, you know, I shudder to use the term Christian, but it made national headlines as far as the um, alternative news about how dare this Anise Parker tell preachers that they have to submit their sermons in advance to be approved. Well, there was a city attorney, you know, a lawyer, you know, went to went four years of college, you know, probably took American history, you know, the Bill of Rights, the American Constitution, and then went to law school where he was also supposed to study the Bill of Rights, freedom of speech. You ever heard of that, the First Amendment? Yeah, freedom of speech. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, go to law school for three years. Another three years. That's seven years of education. Uh, this guy never heard of the Constitution, evidently. But his name was David Feldman. And for those of you who don't know it, Feldman is a very, very, very common Jewish name. Very common Jewish name. And of course, how do they, how do they feel about Jesus? Well, if you want to know how they feel about Jesus, um, go to Google, type in Noahide, N-O-A-H-I-D-E, space, and then type in Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, and then read about the um, how the Hasidic Jews feel about Jesus, about how he was a false prophet, a deceiver, a worship bricks, he was sexually immoral, uh, performed his miracles by the power of witchcraft and Satanism. Yeah, that's that Jesus, right, and they don't even like using the name Jesus, so they call him Yeshu, which is basically an, an acronym in their little Kabbalah stuff that means, may his name be blotted out forever. You see, that's why the Hebrew Roots people don't like using the name Jesus. That's why they call him Yeshua. I'm, I don't know what, you know, may his name be blotted out with an A on the end. I don't know exactly what that means. But, um, so you had a lesbian and a Jewish guy, okay? Now, I'm not even sure elections even matter anymore because, you know, a lot of places they're computerized. And, you know, I took computer science in college. I took programming. I took COBOL. I took assembler language. Yeah, I'm old. They, I, they don't even use that stuff anymore. Now they're using C and a uh, few other things. But the, the point is, you could program a computer so that every other vote automatically goes for a candidate. So they win. You know? It's just who's in charge of the programming. So, uh, you know, I don't even know if these elections are valid anymore. But, but now they've got this um, Sylvester guy. He's, he's black. A black. Uh, the mayor of Houston's black. And he told everybody in Houston, don't evacuate. So now, Houston, parts of Houston have got a meter of water. Uh, that's a yard, over a meter, over a yard. That's over three feet of water, people. I mean, they are in, I guess, non-theological terms, they're in deep doo-doo. I guess that would be the best way you could put it. So... Huh, so, let's take a look at 
what God has to say about whirlwinds, hurricanes. Let's take a look. Here's a good verse, Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 19. Think about this when you talk about the uh, kosher city attorney that didn't even, couldn't even understand that freedom of speech doesn't apply to Christian ministers wanting to do sermons on sodomy. Yeah, can you imagine that? A kosher attorney agreed with the lesbian mayor that, oh, yeah, Christian pastors, oh, they have to submit their sermons in advance. And if they're anti-Semitic or if they're uh, anti-lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, whatever, uh, we're going to make, they can't preach that. Absolutely not. I guess they never heard of the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. You know, freedom of speech. You see, that doesn't apply to Christians anymore. It's getting to be. So, what does the Bible say, Jeremiah 23, 19? Behold, a whirlwind, a whirlwind, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Houston, we have a problem. Are you listening? Uh, Houston, we have a problem. That's, you know, Houston Space Center, Apollo, what was that, Apollo 13? I don't know. I don't watch movies. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. I think we're going to close this out after we read the Proverbs chapter 1, starting in verse 10. Proverbs. Oh, wait a minute. Chapter 1. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 10. God says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. In other words, if the, the, if the sinners try to make you make some make evil look pleasant and interesting, don't consent to it. Don't listen to them. Run away. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. What does that mean? Let us lay in wait to murder these people. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. In other words, we're going to kill them and we're going to take all their stuff. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Yeah, let's steal from everybody and then we'll split it among us. My son, verse 15, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Yeah, they kill people to steal their stuff. Verse 17, Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy for of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gate. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scornings. And fools hate knowledge. What kind of knowledge do fools hate? Godly knowledge. 
Verse 23. Here's the meaty part. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, the Lord called these people, because I have called, and ye refused. I stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have said it not, nothing. But ye have said it not, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. In other words, when I tried to counsel you and tell you the right way, you said it at nothing. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't have my correction. When I sent floods of waters upon you, did you repent? No. But ye have said it not, all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh. I will laugh. At your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit. Therefore they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Houston, we have a problem. God is sending you a wake-up call. Repent. And don't listen to preachers. Pick up your King James Bible and read it, people. Because I'm telling you, most preachers will lie to you for gain. They don't care nothing about you. All they care about is their fancy homes. I heard, I don't know if it's true, that Joel Osteen closed his, shuttered his church when people started asking for uh, sanctuary and help. I don't know if it's true. That's what I heard. Joel Osteen, oh yeah. And uh, Harvey might just make his way back to New Orleans. Do you know when Katrina hit New Orleans? Uh, I think it was within a week or two, they were going to have a, a gay pride event. Oh yeah, Louisiana. New Orleans was going to have a huge gay pride event just before Katrina hit. Did God send them a wake-up call? Did he send them a message? No, it's no. It, it's just a coincidence, people. No big thing. You know, it's just a coincidence. Right. That's what the devil people will tell you. It's just a coincidence. Well, I'll tell you what. Get out of the big cities, people. So... Jeremiah 23, 19, Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Proverbs 10, 25, and we're going to close this out. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. 
This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And his name is Jesus. In his precious name, amen.